My goal is that everyone can use hyperbaric therapy safely and effectively. And today we're going to talk about safety and prevention of some unwanted side effects of HBOT. There are only two contraindications to hyperbaric therapy. One is untreated pneumothorax, which is a medical word for collapsed lung. And second contraindication is inability to equalize pressure in the ears when pressure is rapidly changing. If you flew on the airplane, I'm sure you've experienced change in pressure when the plane is ascending, but especially when it's descending. Divers have also experienced a change in pressure. The same is happening inside a hyperbaric chamber. When we increase the pressure in a hyperbaric chamber, that pressure is changing. Right now we're at one atmospheres of pressure. However, inside a hyperbaric chamber, this can go to 1.3, 1.5, two atmospheres, or even 2.5 atmospheres of pressure, depending on the condition. When the pressure is changing, we need to make sure that the pressure in our ears is the same as the pressure around us. Normally, this is achieved through opening a eustachian tube, a special tube that goes from your ears to your nasal cavity. By opening that tube, we're allowing an influx of air into the ear and that way the pressure is equalized. And there are several maneuvers that you can use to open that eustachian tube. Now, before we start, before I show you these maneuvers, I should say that I always encourage people to practice it before you go inside a hyperbaric chamber. So when you're inside, you're comfortable and you know really well what you're doing. If you're not able to equalize pressure in your ears, most likely you will be experiencing some pain and discomfort in your ears that can even lead to bar trauma, to rupture tympanic membrane. And of course, we want to avoid this situation. We must avoid this situation. You should feel really comfortable and you should be able to equalize pressure in your ears. So normally yawning, opening your mouth, uh, drinking water or moving your jaw would be sufficient to open your station tube. However, inside a hyperbaric chamber, this might not be enough, especially in people whose eustachian tube is not functioning perfectly. Maybe uh, they have some scarring from previous ear infections. Maybe they're a little congested and they have some upper respiratory infection, so their eustachian tube is sort of swollen and doesn't open properly. So before you're going inside a hyperbaric chamber, you should try one of these maneuvers or all three of them to make sure you know how to perform it, but most importantly, to see whether you are able to equalize that pressure when you're at normal pressure. Our first maneuver is called Valsalva, and this is how you do it. You should pinch your nostrils with your two fingers and your mouth should be closed through your nose, although your nose is closed. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna show you how I do this, and you will see that my nostrils will be sort of bulging a little bit here from the pressure and of the air that is created inside. This will push the air to my eustachian tube and it will open my ears. I should feel the popping, that's how I know that I know how to perform this maneuver. So here is Valsalva. If when you're doing Valsalva, you need to use your abdominal muscles or your rib cage, that means that you're pushing it too much and Valsalva is not the right maneuver for you. If this is happening, I suggest that you use a different maneuver that's called Toynbee. With Toynbee, you also need to close your nostrils with your two fingers, but instead of blowing um, air into your nose, you're gonna be swallowing like that. Now, I feel more comfortable doing Balsalva, but both of these maneuvers are absolutely perfectly fine as long as they open the eustachian tube and the ear pressure is equalized with ambient pressure.
And our third maneuver is Frenzel. Frenzel is a little more sophisticated. Divers know perfectly well how to do it. They use it a lot. So you need to close your nostrils again. And then instead of swallowing or blowing into the nose, you should say a letter K like that. This should open your ears. If here at sea level, before going inside a hyperbaric chamber, you can do this without no problem. Uh, most likely you're not gonna experience any problems inside a hyperbaric chamber. The only thing you need to do, and the only thing you need to remember, that you need to keep equalizing pressure in your ears when the chamber is being pressurized when the pressure is going up. Once you're at pressure, there's no need to continue doing that because there's no change in pressure. So most likely you've already equalized pressure in your ears with ambient pressure, so you're absolutely fine. Now, if you cannot do this at sea level, then we need to dig a little further. We need to ask you questions or you need to ask yourself questions. Are you a little congested today? Um, do you have an ear infection? If this is the case, I strongly suggest to wait until it resolves and then you can use a hyperbaric chamber unless you have um, health or life emergency where you must be using a hyperbaric chamber. Another way to help with uh, being able to equalize ear pressure is to use decongestants or even for um, little children before we start using hyperbaric chamber with them. And right now I'm gonna go into how you help children equalize pressure in their ears because especially very small ones, they might not be able even to understand what they need to do with Valsalva. So you can use um, garlic oil or mullein oil uh, with several drops uh, in two ears, several days on a daily basis before you plan to use hyperbaric therapy. This will help to soften tympanic membrane and this will help to make this whole ear equalization technique a lot easier. For little babies who don't understand what is Valsalva, Toynbee or Frenzo, you can do several things. Uh, if they're still nursing, and of course little baby who is still nursing is gonna be using their hyperbaric chamber with their mother, you can nurse them. And when they swallow, the eustachian tube will open and the pressure will be equalized. You can give them some water if they're not hungry and they don't wanna uh, be nursing at the moment. You can show them how to open their mouth like that and move their jaw because this will help to equalize pressure in the ears through opening um, their eustachian tube. So there are ways and if you feel that their ears are congested, as I said, either to congestants, like um, you can get an advice with your primary health health practitioner on the decongestants that you can use safely or uh, ear drops, um, absolutely natural ones like mullein oil or garlic oil. You can take water with you inside a hyperbaric chamber. Again, even for adults, if you're having difficulty, sipping on water might help you there. But it is super important that first of all, you know how to equalize pressure in your ears, and secondly, you actually do it throughout the pressurization of the chamber. I cannot tell you how many people reach out to me with the same question. They will say, I've used a hyperbaric chamber, my ears are blocked, I have this popping sensation that doesn't go away, I don't feel fine, when is this gonna go away? And I asked them one question, um, were you told to equalize pressure in your ears when I, the chamber was pressurizing? And all of them are really surprised when they hear this question. So it is important that you do it yourself. If you're a practitioner, it is super important that you go through this ear equalization techniques with all of your clients before they go inside a hyperbaric chamber. This will help us not only avoid 
bar trauma, which is not that common. And it does happen, but in very small amount of cases. But it will make the whole hyperbaric experience a lot more comfortable. And it will ensure that people continue using their hyperbaric chamber. Because imagine somebody goes in, they're not equalizing pressure in their ears, the pressure builds up, they start feeling pressure and pain. So what do they wanna do? They wanna get out of the hyperbaric chamber without going through their session and without getting all the benefits. And then next time you offer them a hyperbaric session, they're reluctant to go in because they've already experienced pain and discomfort. That's why educate yourself, educate your patients, educate your clients, and that will ensure that everybody has the most amazing experience inside a hyperbaric chamber. I hope you liked this video. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. Maybe you have your own way of equalizing pressure in the ears. There are other ones that I didn't talk about in this particular video. And share your experience of using hyperbaric therapy. Give us likes, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you in the next video.